Microsoft announced that they'll be ending support for Windows 10 on October 14, 2025. Now, end of support for software simply means that the vendor will no longer provide any technical support, security updates, or bug fixes for a specific product. If you're using Windows 10 software, what you will not receive after October 14 is technical support of any kind. You won't have any software updates and you won't have any bug fixes for the software. So that you don't miss out on all these Windows updates, you need to upgrade to Windows 11. And according to Windows, your PC must have a processor of 1 GHz or faster with two or more cores on a compatible 64-bit processor, 4 GB of RAM minimum, 64 GB or higher of storage. It must have a UEFI or secure boot capable. It must have a TPM 2.0. It must have a compatible DirectX 12 or later graphics card. And the display must be a 720p that is greater than 9 inch diagonally with 8 bits per color channel. And you must have an internet connection and a Microsoft account. If your PC does not meet those requirements, installing Windows will be so difficult or you'll just need to buy a new laptop. But we've seen people installing Windows 11 on unsupported PCs. This is done by bypassing the TPM and secure boot checks using a registry tweak or tools like Rufus. But it has its own downsides because you might not receive updates when they officially changed to Windows 11 after October 14th, 2025. And you might have a lot of driver issues and firmware issues because the PC is generally not compatible with Windows 11. There are benefits to switching to Windows 11, which include improved security features like smart up control and better ransomware protection. And it requires TPM 2.0 and secure boot, which help in deeper hardware level protection. Now, TPM 2.0 and Secure Boot are the ones which are limiting most computers not to be able to install Windows 11. TPM 2.0 is a dedicated hardware-based security chip which is found in modern PCs motherboards, which securely stores encryption keys, passwords, certificates, and system integrity measurements. Now, it is important because of the deeper hardware level protection and for features like BitLocker, Windows Hello, and Measured Boot. Now, for Secure Boot, it helps a lot in ensuring that only trusted and signed software can boot on your computer because it helps in blocking malware like rootkits from loading before the Windows OS starts. Windows 11 also has built-in Copilot AI integration, which is usually on supported devices. It may not work well when you install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC. This helps you to use Microsoft Copilot for quick answers, summaries, and assistance like ChatGPT. And it is also integrated in the taskbar and system so you can easily access it and it usually makes everyday tasks faster and easier like any other AI and I've also tried it even to generate like an image and it actually generated a very good image as you can see. Now there's a better phone integration feature. You can use phone link to connect to your phone or iPhone and in Windows 10 you could only connect to Android phones and it is good for viewing text, notifications, photos and even calls and one more thing you can do is that you can even call from the PC so another feature which is in Windows 11 is tabbed file explorer. You can be able to open multiple folders in one window like browser tabs which makes navigating files easier and faster. And you have snap layouts for multitasking. When you open a window and go to the maximize icon, you can be able to change the layouts of the windows you have, especially in bigger screens, it comes in handy. Now, Windows 11 also promises better gaming performance because it includes direct storage, which has faster load times, especially with NVMe SSDs. It includes Auto HDR, which brings brighter, richer colors, even in older games. It has better CPU scheduling, 
which is improved performance on newer PCs, which makes gaming smoother. And they're saying it have lower latency, which is slightly reduced input lag in some games. Xbox apps and Game Pass, which are built in and have easier access to Game Pass. Snap layouts, which are for better multitasking, especially when gaming or streaming. Now, if you shift to Windows 11, in your current PC, you won't necessarily feel any performance gains because it will be very small and similar to Windows 10 in RAW FPS, but you'll have the Auto HDR and the direct storage and a smoother UI, which has modern features like snap layouts and widgets, but you won't see major gaming performance gains. So if you are upgrading, don't expect big FPS boosts, but upgrade for the features that will have in windows 11 the snipping tool got major upgrades compared to the one in windows 10 now apart from taking screenshots you can also be able to screen record and you can capture videos of your screen directly from the tool without needing any third party applications you just use the shortcut fn plus the print screen and it opens the full snipping tool where you can choose between snipping or recording even a portion of your screen. Windows 11 also comes with its own drawbacks because it requires a Microsoft account and internet to install, opposing to Windows 10 where you could install without a Microsoft account. Even if you can bypass this, most users don't know how to and most people shifting to Windows 11 tend to just create a new account so that they can be able to use Windows 11. Microsoft is slowly removing local accounts option for personal no use but you can bypass it and you have to click twice so as to get the right click menu which is similar to windows 10 you have to click show more options for the full classic context menu now windows 11 like any other windows it has pre-installed bloatware but windows 11 has a lot of bloatware when it comes to suggested apps games and even shopping links they can be removed but remember not everyone can be able to remove them so most people just stay with the bloatware as it is it has a lot of driver and and stability issues especially on unsupported pcs when windows 11 was newer it had a lot of problems especially with amd drivers but now they have quite fixed it but for the people who have unsupported pcs especially installing with the ways i mentioned before they have a lot of driver instability issues and the ai features they are mainly locked to copilot pcs you will have a lot of features ai with the copilot pilot but you need to buy a better laptop which they're calling copilot pcs so as to access the unlocked features of copilot features like copilot recall and co-creator they are only available on copilot plus pcs and you know it's like a push to buy a new device and uh, many users are seeing this as a marketing stunt to drive hardware sales and it has strict hardware requirements you know even high performing laptops which are older like capable laptops like core 7 7 gen are being blocked from installing windows 11 and requires tpm 2.0 secure boot and ufi which are newer processors and it leaves out millions of capable pcs for no technical reason now a lot of people are feeling that windows is pushing people to shift to windows 11 and it actually seems like so but why does it seem like that so i think supporting two operating systems is expensive and the fact that they have already made windows 11 quite stable they want to focus on windows 11 and dropping windows 10 support cuts a lot of costs and it will allow them to be focused on a single operating system now there are security improvements in windows 11 because you have frameworks including 2.0 tpm you have secure boot and 
then you have the newer CPUs and you have more advanced features which were still in Windows but now they have been improved like BitLocker, Windows Hello, Virtualization Based Security and more. There is the money issue. Many capable older PCs like the 7th gen Intel laptops are locked out of Windows 11. Even though they are good, good performing laptops, some of them you cannot install Windows 11 officially. You need to use the unsupported ways of installing Windows 11. Now this makes a lot of users to buy new hardware even though there is no practical reason because their PCs can actually handle the OS pretty well. And also if you need to ship from Windows 10 to Windows 11, some users will have to buy Windows licensing and the OEMs will benefit from this new wave of device sales. The hardware cutoff feels intentional and to many it looks like a way to drive industry profits by facing out usable machines. Now with the rise of Copilot PCs, the premium laptops which have built-in AI features and dedicated NPUs, the users are being pushed toward an expensive future with feature exclusives to the newer hardware. Now these AI devices, they promise advanced capabilities and they come with much higher price tag. So and in the end, most general users won't necessarily question this, especially the people who can afford it because they simply go and upgrade or buy a new device because Microsoft said so. Now that is where you can see that they'll be benefiting financially from all this and the push will actually help the company to have more money. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And we have the fear of missing out. Windows 10 support ends on October 14th and there will be no more updates or security patches after that. Now, they have pop-ups everywhere and ads and messages to create that sense of urgency and the messaging implies that you're missing out on features, a lot of performance and protection if you don't upgrade. Now, this creates a fear within the users and they feel the need to buy the new operating systems especially if you're dealing with very sensitive information and you're being told that you'll no longer have security updates or security patches you have that fear and you'll just shift to it so now whether you should upgrade really depends on your situation because Windows 10 will still work even after support ends in 2025. What you lose is security updates, bug fixes, and feature improvements. And it's not by immediate effect. And you've seen people using Windows 7, even though its support ended back in January 2020. But yeah, it's risky but it shows that older versions can keep running long after the end of support period reaches and passes. If you're planning to stay on Windows 10 after 2025, you can opt to use third-party antiviruses like Bitdefender, Kaspersky, etc. to add some protection. But the thing is, no antivirus can fully replace the deep system level updates Microsoft provides. Now, that said, if your PC is compatible and the upgrade does not cost you much or anything, I'd recommend you to switch to Windows 11 because it's more secure and it's more built for the next generation of apps and hardware. And honestly, it's working fine for most users right now. So if you can upgrade and especially if you want to stay current and protected, it would be good that you move to Windows 11. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, you can subscribe to this channel and like the video because I'll be releasing even more and more educative videos on this channel. Let's meet in the next one.